Oh. I have traveled a long way to get this fish. anchovies, all my uh, watermelon apexes, my hooks, my weights, my swivels, all every, all my ter terminal tackle. And that is sitting at my house right now on the dining room table. So that is a, uh, a bummer. Luckily, Ish with Fish is out with me today. You might be able to see him in the background. He's a little ways back there. He was uh, nice enough to offer me one of his cripple anchovy hoods. So this is literally, I think these are the only two hooks that I have today. So it's critical I don't break off. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be an interesting day. Hopefully I can catch one on Ish's tackle here. So I'm out here trolling for salmon. This is actually my third week in a row coming out here. The first week, you kind of, I put it in another video, I caught one shaker. Last week I came out here with Taku, Outdoor Chef Life. Check him out if you haven't done so already. And uh, I caught one fish and uh, let me just say it wasn't after video and I'll show you why. Oh, check that out. I caught one. I'm not even sure if it's a... I guess it's a king salmon. So that's kind of how my salmon season has gone so far. Not too much luck on the catching side of things. Luckily, uh, Taku was able to hook a keeper last time we were out. Unfortunately, it did come off, so that one is still out here somewhere, assuming someone didn't catch it in the last week. But yeah, I'm out here, third day in a row. Not giving up on the salmon just yet. So I'm actually gonna start my troll. Actually, the last time I was out here, some people caught some in a lot shallower water than what we were fishing. So I'm gonna try that out. I'm gonna try all over, basically. Look for some bait, try and figure out where the fish are. Just based on reports from other guys, it sounds like it is a spotty bite at best. So, we'll see how it goes. Maybe we'll stumble upon a good school of fish here. We're on a tight schedule this morning. I'm supposed to get to a wedding at two o'clock and it's quite a ways away from here. I got like a two hour drive to get there. So, we're on a bit of a time crunch. I gotta catch these fish quick. We're gonna be efficient with our time and hopefully we can get to the wedding on time. Not be good if I showed up late to a wedding. something. We're on boys. I literally just dropped this down like not even a minute, like 10 seconds ago. And I hit it right here. Feels like a salmon play this really nicely because uh, it's been a slow day and when you do hook up on a slow day you got to make sure you convert on all your chances so we're gonna take this one slow and enjoy it but man this guy he is literally not moving at all it's, it's going straight that way so if you're salmon fishing 
is keeping pressure on the fish because we're using barbless hook here in California. Barbless hook is required. So any tension is uh, an opportunity for that fish to come off. And I don't want that to happen here. So one thing that we have in our favor with the kayak, when we're on the kayak is we can keep pedaling. And uh, that'll enable us to keep more pressure on the fish as well. In addition to reeling it in, obviously. But uh, yeah, I haven't seen it surface yet, but it feels like a good fish. Oh, dang. Look at that. Let me turn the clicker on so you guys can see what I'm witnessing here. I mean, when he wants to go, he's definitely going. Okay, so we're getting him close here. Now, this is the time. Oh. This is the time when you have the biggest chance of losing him. So you want to make sure you have him nice and tired out when you get him close to the boat like this. And uh, I do not yet, so I'm going to try and pedal a little bit more and tire him out a little more. And also bring up my downrigger. We want to keep him away from the kayak. So I get this downrigger up. Okay. Downrigger's up. Now we're on the fish. Okay. I still haven't seen him really at all. I'm pretty sure he's a salmon. Oh yeah. Oh, it's a nice one too. I think it's a good one. Good one. Okay, here we go. Oh wow. Okay. There he goes. Got another. Got him. Woo! Oh, we got him. I've traveled a long way to get this fish. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I've traveled over 20 miles now trolling in the kayak. No motor, just pure manpower. And it finally, finally paid off here. Let's get him on the stringer. He is officially on the stringer. Check this out. So, these are barbless hooks, right? Look at how you see this hook it's right on the lip there. I don't know if you can see that. That hook's right on the lip. Look at how easy this is going to come out. Boom. It's not that long actually, but he's definitely thick. It's been feeding well. I bet you this guy is full of anchovies because we've been trolling over a huge, like multiple huge schools of anchovies. And I bet you. Once I clean them up, I bet you there's an anch I bet you there's at least one anchovy in there, probably more. But uh, so a couple of things to note with salmon here in California: a, there's two different kinds of salmon. There is Chinook salmon and there's coho salmon. Coho salmon are illegal for us to keep, so we're looking for Chinook salmon. And the way you can tell the difference, they're actually they're very similar. They're really hard to tell the difference actually to the naked eye. But I don't know if you can see in there black gums that's the telltale sign of a chinook salmon and that's what we're looking for in order to keep here in california so definitely a chinook salmon and definitely a keeper to look for 20 inches uh, i didn't measure this guy but he's probably i guess like 28 inches somewhere around there so here in california i'm not sure if they have this in oregon washington or up in alaska either but here in california since the salmon de population is so depleted uh, we've had to, we say we, I haven't had anything to do with it. Anyways, whoever does it, they farm raise a bunch of little smolts and then release them into the wild. And the way you can tell the wild fish from the hatchery raised smolts is the hatchery has a clipped adipose fin back here. And uh, this one obviously is not clipped, so this is a wild fish. And I've actually, I've caught both in the past and uh, looked at them side by side, tasted them side by side. To me, they're they're the same. I haven't really noticed any difference, but it's just cool to note that this is a wild fish. This one didn't have anything to do with 
any hatchery hatchery business. There's no way to describe by putting it in video how uh, how far I've traveled to catch this fish. But you guys are just gonna have to take my word. I've paddled over 20 miles. So my first trip out here, which you actually saw, I think in the last video, I put a little clip into there of that little uh, shaker that I caught. That day I traveled somewhere between like seven or eight miles. I came out with Taku Outdoor Chef Life. Uh, again, the next time, that day was an epic day. I mean, not in terms of fish catching, but just in terms of the work we put in. We really, really tried to catch a steam out here. And traveled, I think we traveled about 10, maybe even more miles. And then today I've probably put in five or six as well. So definitely easily over 20 miles traveled in the kayak just to catch this fish. And uh, yeah, I don't want to hang them over for too long because salmon are notoriously People like to eat them, and sea lions like to eat them as well, So, and actually sharks. So, I'm just bleeding them out real quick here. I don't intend to keep them in the water the whole time. Like, this isn't even that big of a salmon. Probably like 10 pounds, I don't know, maybe not even. Somewhere around 10 pounds, I guess. But, uh, it's the work that I've put in to catch this fish that makes it, makes it rewarding. All right, guys, so let me show you the setup that I'm using to catch this fish. Uh, in previous videos, I was using a flasher, but like I said at the beginning of the video, I didn't bring any tackle today, and uh, figures it's the day I went to actually catch something. But just straight up mono, 20 pound mono to 30 pound mono leader with a crippled anchovy and, a, and a, obviously a frozen anchovy in the, in the hood there. If you want to know more about how to rig this up, I actually did a, another video way back when. I'll link it in the description below if you want to check that out. But once we got that all set up, all I do is uh, put that back, eh, maybe about 20 to 30 feet. It doesn't have to go back that far, but we do want to get it away from the downrigger ball just because I feel like uh, if a fish sees this giant piece of lead, it's probably not gonna, probably not gonna eat. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. So anyway, we put it back about 30 feet. It's probably about good. And then I have this little, it's called a Scotty Lake Troller downrigger and basically it's a mini version of what most boats in the bay area here use uh, which is just a regular downrigger so it's a four pound weight attached to a, basically a, a winch that'll hold that weight in us since we got such a heavy weight we'll be able to hold our our uh, depth much easier than if we were just using like a six ounce or whatever we normally would use so uh yeah hook it up with this little clip here and basically it's like a closed pin you get the the line in there once the fish hits boom pops out of that clothespin and then you're fighting the fish freely just like I just was in the last fish so I got that in there just start my troll you don't have to be going super fast but you do have to it is nice if you're moving a little bit so drop this down each turn of the handle here is one foot so one two three four five especially for salmon you feel like holding your depth is critical because these fish are not on the bottom like a halibut or a lingcod oh a giant whale over here Anyway, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But uh, salmon are middle of the water fish. I mean, they could be anywhere from the surface all the way down to the bottom. So holding that steady depth, today it's at 30 feet. If you could be 60, it could be 50, it just depends on the day. But uh, making sure you're at one certain depth, I feel is key. So this this little piece of equipment right here, I don't know how much, how much it is. I'll leave it in the description below, but for what it costs, however much it is it's definitely worth it in my opinion so check that out if you're interested if you have a kayak and you want to troll for salmon highly recommend all right guys that's going to conclude the fishing today we finally got our salmon from the kayak and not a bad one either it's probably about i guess around 10 pounds i'm just guessing could be more could be less but a uh, decent fish from the kayak at least and like i said before it's not really about how big the fish was it's about how far we took us to get it so Definitely a successful day in my opinion out on the kayak and uh, we'll be back for more. Huge, huge shout out to two people. One, Ish with Fish. Without him, I wouldn't have caught this fish. He uh, He's the one who lent me this crippled anchovy that I caught the fish on. So huge shout out to him. He and I actually went separate ways at one point in this morning. So I heard he caught a fish. I don't know if it's true or not, but either regardless, check out his channel. And uh, if you did catch a fish, I'll put that video linked in the description below. And Another huge shout out to Taku from Outdoor Chef Life for uh, sticking with me. Even though we didn't get to put together a video, 
he uh, he's never been on the kayak fishing before really and we paddled 10 miles first time out i mean that's pretty impressive in my opinion so shout out to both of those guys make sure you check them both out and yeah thank you guys for watching this video i mean there, there's a reason there hasn't been as many videos in the past few weeks it's because i've been struggling out here to catch one so i'm glad we finally did it I can uh, kind of check that box off even though I still want to catch a big one, like a really big one on the kayak. But anyway, at least we caught one. So thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. All right, guys, got to return my crippled anchovy and my pliers to my hero for the day. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.